everyone. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central, where we relax and craft and work on a project together. Uh, right now, it is Finish It Fall. It's kind of an open period until the end of, no, uh, end of October, where we're just going to finish up some unfinished uh, projects. So right now, I am working on my hand-stitched project. Let's hold it up this way. A uh, hand-stitched project. Uh, from Blair of Wisecraft. It's from the Wisecraft Quilts book. We got all kind of like a little row of these phalanges on last night and we're going to finish those up, stitch all the seams together, and then we have we have four other pieces that go with um, this yet that we have to sew on. So we'll at least prep those tonight. I don't know how far we'll get. And then I want to turn this into a pillow. So uh, we'll cut out a piece for the front and stitch it on and then finish up the rest of the pillow. That we'll do later uh, next week, but I'm hoping that we can actually finish this next week. We'll see. That's the plan though, guys. Thanks for joining me. I am going to flip you around and we'll get stitching right away here. Okay. Oh, and uh, I heard that a few of you got your cute little guys today. So I saw a few of your pictures. I haven't, um, I haven't responded to you guys yet, but I saw that a few of you got your, your little pin cushions from Fish Museum and Circus. So that was really neat to see. They are just so freaking sweet. I, I think they're just the most darling little guys. <laughs> oh, fun. It was neat to see, see which one, which ones you guys got too. All right. Right side together. We just have three more of these guys to sew on. I hope it goes quickly. We'll see. Oh, Joyce, you got yours. Awesome. Yeah, oh, I saw your picture. It looked so sweet. Yours has, yours is like uh, my fill guy, but with um, a few little, like little green stripes and, and uh, like tan dots. I thought it was so sweet. They're so cute. I just got a newsletter for her next sale coming up and it's uh, she's got some bigger characters in it so that was kind of neat but I'm still I'm still holding out for oh yeah wonder clip thanks Patricia um, I'm still holding out for that thread pooping unicorn <laughs> oh your guy's name is, name is Newman oh that's sweet that's a that's a good name but yeah, so when I see one of those thread pooping unicorns, I think I'm going to have to try and snag one of those. Then I think the itch will be scratched. <laughs> uh, if she even makes any more, who knows? Alrighty, I'm... I'm excited. Oh, you! Oh, your unicorn kit, kit t came today too, Jane. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, in on November sixth, no, not November sixth. November twentieth, we'll be starting the uh, uh, that little unicorn project. Let me see if I can reach behind me. We'll be doing the Heidi Boyd uh, Hemlock Forest Friends little unicorn. So it's a little cute little stuffed unicorn. I don't think it will take forever. I think it'll be a nice, relaxing, fun, quick project, which is, I think, just what we'll need because we'll have just finished block block four of the I Love Home block of the month. And, you know, that means it's time for a nice short project. Ooh, Splendid Sampler Hearts tonight and the flowers tonight. Awesome, Athena. You're getting, getting stuff done too. Uh, tomorrow, I'm hoping to take off a little bit and just have a little crafting day. So I can't, I'm, I haven't decided if I'm going to sit here and sew. I won't work on any of the projects that, that we're working on together. Uh, but I might, I have an idea for a sewing project that I might just start just because I don't know why. Uh, 
like I need another project, but I might do that. I still have my sewing machine out here, so I might do that. Otherwise, I might work on my jean quilt some more, my jean quilt that I still don't have done. Um, I might try and do a few more ties on that. I, I'm hand tying it for the quilting. So I, I got a huge portion of that done. And man, it would be nice to get done with, with the hand tying. And I have not watched Project Run Runway, so maybe that's a good thing for tomorrow. I could watch Project Runway and do some ties on that jean quilt. That might be, that might be my game tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> Regardless, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be a whole lot of relaxing. Oh, you guys are working on your, Irene and Sally, you're working on your English paper piecing too. Yeah, I want to... Um, get this as far as I can. I don't think we'll f quite finish the English paper piecing tonight because um, we have those four, we have all, we have these guys yet that we got to prepare, but maybe we'll get it at least as far as preparing those. You have six more English paper pieces to put on. Oh, then applique to the pillow. All right. I think that's my plan to Rosalie. So I, um, I am going to, so we probably, like I said, probably won't finish the English paper piecing tonight, but we should pretty easily be able to finish it on Monday. So I'm thinking on Monday, we'll finish the front of this and then uh, cut out, cut out the front piece, maybe a little bit bigger because I'll trim it down when we're done, but I'll cut out the, the front piece of the pillow and then we can start appliquing on on Monday as well, I think. What quilt style did you make with the jean quilt? Oh, you did a fence reel with the one you made. It was a queen. Oh yeah, so I made so mine's a queen as well and it's it's like a, an extra large queen because I wanted it could almost probably be considered a king, but um, it was I wanted the the sides to hang over a lot. So I made it extra big. And I did a log cabin. So I think it is, it's 16 large log cabins made out of one and a half inch strips. So the strips are and are one inch in the end. So one inch log cabin blocks, 16 of them. So log cabins, sometimes they have you know, dark fabric on two sides and light fabric on the two on two sides. I did that as well. So the dark fabric was outside of the jeans and the the light fabrics were the insides of the jeans. That's that's how I did uh, the log cabin. Oh man, Bonnie, that's no fun. <laughs> Getting your eyes dilated. That's ugh. always a weird sensation. Oh yeah, so Patricia, that sounds just like mine. Yeah, it's so, it's really heavy. And I kind of want to wash it before, well, I def definitely am going to have to wash it before using it. It's been sitting around and for, you know, nine years or something, however long I've been working on it and just drug on the floor and all that. And I want to wash it too because I'm using wool for the the ties and I want them to like, I want them to felt up into the little wool balls, the ties. So I don't know. I, that's, that's the big question mark is, can I fit it in my, my washing machine? And I'll, I'll, I think I'll try at first and see how it goes, if it can handle it. Um, and if not, then I'll have to bring it to a place to watch it, which blows, but we'll see. How are you going to sew the EPP to the, oh, I'm going to hand stitch it. So I'm going to hand stitch this. So just like how we're doing these stitches, I'm just going to whip stitch or blankets or, um, not blanket stitch, um, ladder stitch or whip stitch, just the edge directly to, to the pillow. So I'm going to do that all by hand as well. I figure, you know, we're doing all this by hand. It'd be weird to stop now, but the actual pillow I will also, but I, I'm going to applicate this to, to the pillow for sure. Oh, you didn't use anything inside, just the 
flannel on the back. See, maybe I should have done that. I, I have a very thin, for my jean quilt, I have a, a thin batting. It's like a thin bamboo batting. It drapes really nicely. I'm kind of excited about it. Um, I wanted it, you know, super warm because it'll be like a winter quilt. Um, so it does have batting and a backing fabric, which, you know, so all that adds weight and uh, thickness too, I suppose. But the batting is not, it, it's not thick. Like it doesn't give it any hefty loft or anything. Oh, take the jean gold to the laundromat. Uh, so it's not working in your washer. I have an old, I, I mean, it's not old, but I, my washer does have a, it's like where you put it in from the top and it's got an agitator and it's not one of those new front load ones. You posted your new babies on Penguin Fish Quilters. Oh, or crafters. I got two from, oh, Alice, I'm gonna have to check it out. I am, I'm gonna, that's that's one thing I wanna do uh, uh, tomorrow for sure. I wanna hang out on, on the Penguin and Fish Crafters group a little bit and see what you guys have been up to. Had kind of a weird out of it week a little bit. So I'm feeling a little behind on, on what you guys are all doing. That's awesome that you were able to snag too. That's tough. That's hard to do from a fish museum and circus. Hard to, hard to get two before they're all bought up. Good work. <laughs> Oh, so you picked a, you picked materials for the binding. Oh, so oh, for the, for your table topper. Oh, I, I, I'd love to see, did you post at all in uh, um, the table topper, Tamara, in the English, or uh, English, the uh, Penguin and Fish Crafters group? I'd love to see how, how you turn this into a table topper. The main thing with the Washington Jeans Quilt is not the size as much as how heavy it is. Oh, and how wet. Oh, yeah. Rough on the home machine, spinning out the water. Okay. Oh yeah, my left thumb. That's where I I burnt it on the iron, the other day, um, two days ago, I think here. And then I keep scraping it against stuff because I use my hands for everything. So yeah, it's like not good. Yeah. So washing the jean quilt. That's. I mean, there is a laundromat near me, but. Every time I want to watch wash the quilt, that's going to be annoying if I have to go to the laundromat. Although I kind of knew that going in that this would be a tough deal, but oh well. I'm still happy I made it. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do tomorrow morning. I'm going to sit and watch me some Project Runway and um, put some more ties in that quilt. Not sure I'll, I'll get it done, but hopefully... Hopefully close. All right, this one I want to for sure to get the clip in because this is pretty awkward right here. Did you guys name name them or did she did uh it's did uh Deborah I think it's Deborah from Fish Museum and and circus did she name name them this time or or did you guys name them because Newman's really cute oh project runway <laughs> that uh that fashion show on on lifetime where all the designers make stuff I like that one Oh, you named yours. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. I, I figured you guys named them. Uh, you guys named them well. <laughs> I think they're so cute. Or like, uh, they seemed fitting with with uh, the photos and stuff. I saw a few of them. I just, I wasn't able to answer, answer yet today. Newman. <laughs> All right, this is our last guy, and then we can work on the little radiating lines coming out of this. It's getting bigger and bigger. Oh, I suppose we could take, we'll take the pieces out first. There's a few um, paper pieces in the back here that we can pop out before we uh, stitch up the sides. 
once they're surrounded, once a paper piece is surrounded on all the sides, then you can take the paper out. But like I said, a lot of people like keeping it in the whole time. And I think um, like what Blair was doing when she was framing it, she was she was leaving the papers in just to give it um, some form, I'm thinking. At all three sales on Saturday. Oh yeah, Rosalie, you gotta. If you're talking about the, I think I missed a little bit, but if you're talking about fish museum and circus, you gotta be there right on the button, um, and and um, keep uh, reloading your page and stuff, because they're literally gone right away, um, within seconds, like actual seconds. So yeah. You gotta be ready to snag them. Oh yeah, so, so yep, exactly, Alice. You gotta be refreshing all the time, and then your anxiety goes up because it's like, oh my god, it's the time is coming. Is it gonna be the next time I refresh or the next time? Oh, and it, and you still didn't get it, Rosalie. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, it's uh one of those little tricky deals. All right, there's a knot. I am going to, well, you know what? I have a little bit left. Why don't I just sew up this fillet, this uh, side right here while I'm, while I have enough thread left. I think that will work. Yeah, like refreshing your browser, your, um, just hitting reload on your, your web browser a bunch of times. Your Woodley, oh Woodley, that's cute. From Fish Museum Circus came yesterday. Woohoo! So did she have several sales? Like I, I, I didn't. Um, I know she had the like. If you're if you haven't got one yet, join this mail list. And and so I didn't I didn't join that because I I didn't want to steal any uh steal any uh from anyone that hasn't doesn't have one yet. But um, so I I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know how she structured her last sale. So she had three different sales, huh? That's nice that she did that though. So, um, three sales, 6 a.m. noon and six. Oh, for funny with different e items in each sale. Oh, well that's clever. That's nice. Then, uh, there's different chances and stuff to get them. That's good. Oh, so Alice, is that how you got two of them? You were able to jump in at, at different sales? Cause I, cause I was like, wow, how, how could you snag two in, in one sale? That, that was surprising cause they go so fast. Oh yeah. You got a, yeah, it took me three times. So I, I, I missed it the first the first two times I wasn't able to snake anything at a sale. Um, so the third time, the third and fourth time I was able to get it. The third time I learned um, that you couldn't put two things in a cart at once because you wouldn't get it. And uh, then the fourth time I learned, oh, hey, I probably shouldn't click pay with PayPal because then I have to go through logging in PayPal and that all takes time that someone else could have purchased the item under me. So just putting it in your cart does not reserve it for you. You have to put it in your cart, quickly hit the pay with credit card button and then hit submit um, or submit order or whatever. And at that point, then it's, then you've snagged it. So the faster you get to that submit page, um, then then you can snake it. So next time, <laughs> maybe I'll get it perfect. Refreshing just means, uh, oh, how do you refresh on the iPad? On the iPad, you probably just pull down the top. Like if you scroll so it just pulls the top down, so that usually reloads the page. Um, I'm not positive on like specifically Etsy or, or a website, but that would be my guess. And if you're on a laptop or something, or a PC, or not, a desktop, that's the word, um, then where you type in your web address, usually there's a little 
um, circular arrow, like a circle with an arrow on it. If you click that, that reloads the page. So sometimes, you know, the page will be there and if it doesn't reload by itself, um, stuff might be happening that you're not seeing. So that's why you have to keep hitting reload so you're up to date right when, you know, when she's posting it so you so your page is the most current. All right, I think this is enough. I'm just gonna, I'm just weaving this in so it's out of the way. But I'm gonna get a new piece of thread because this one's getting a little mangled. Okay, thread, where is my thread? Over here. All right, where, where were we here? So, okay, so I, um, here's where we started yesterday. I sewed all of them uh, onto the outer edge. And this one I, I was able to sew up the side here too. So now I'm gonna start here. I'll probably start up here and then I'll just jump, you know, and keep jumping to the next point. And I don't care if there's a big piece of thread going through the back because we'll tie a knot each time, but I'm gonna go around all of these now and try and do these flanges. And I think that's probably how far we'll get tonight. But I don't know, maybe we'll we'll prep these. So we still have these pieces to do. These go here and there, but we gotta get these. Oop, there we go, like that. But I gotta get these little side bits done first. So, all right, more stitching. The next bit of thread, my needle. Okay, there we go. Thanks, Alice. Oh, I also, um, I want us this weekend too, besides working on my jean quilt and working on this other sewing thing that I might do, I want to get you guys an email uh, because I do have, I have a little um, updates on the, uh, the uh, penguin and fish bundles. So I'll show you where those are at right now. And uh, just a little update on those. Timeline is still good for mid-November, but I gotta see some of the like, like the uh, cases for the for the scissors and stuff, so I'm I'm excited for those and and we're getting a bunch of stuff in the mail, uh, like a huge box of floss and stuff. So I'll show you some of those things. All right, stitching up the side. I could have started from the top, but I thought it was easier since we already have all these bits matched. And you know what? I forgot to take the papers out. So we'll, we'll do this side and then we'll take some of these papers out. That'll be fun. I like doing that. Ooh, I definitely can tell that I glued close to the edge on this green one. Oh yeah, this is that one that we barely had enough. So I, I put extra glue because I can feel like that crease is pretty serious there and I think I'm going through the paper a little bit. So we'll have to um, we'll have to yank that one out probably, but it'll be okay. So before I applique this on, you know, so I'll cut my piece of fabric for the front of the pillow, but I'll probably cut it a little larger so I can trim it down when I'm done because you know, with all this applique, I might be like sucking it in a little bit or I might, um, I might fray the edges a little, so I'm gonna cut it like an inch bigger or so, and then center this on it, and then we'll trim it down. But before I, um, before I center this on it, I'm gonna give it a good press, and then we'll take out all the papers. And then, you know, I think we'll use our applique pins. We'll, we'll applique, pin it all up, and, and start appliquing it. It'll be fun got a big perimeter, so I don't know how long it'll take. Uh, I'm gonna, Grace, I'm gonna use a dark purple. It's kind of the color purple from the, the center. I think it'll be really pretty. I think it, since it's darker than most of my fabrics, I think this the whole piece will pop off of it. Uh, so I think, 
Oh yeah, plus seam allowances, exactly. Good point, Jenna. So I'm gonna make it about an inch bigger plus, you know, more for the seam allowances. Then I can trim it down to, to the seam allowance size. And I gotta measure, I gotta figure out what size I need to make it. So it's an 18 inch pillow, so I'd like to assume that I'll need like 18 and a half inches so that it's 18 inches when it's final, but I'm, I think I'll probably actually measure instead of assuming that. All right, because I don't know, I don't know if there's like a special measurement thing for pillows, like if you have to make it a little bit bigger or whatever. Um, oh, you starched yours. Oh, that was, that's a probably a good idea too. So Irene, I think I'll do that too. I'll spray it with starch. And you know what, I might, well, I don't want to ruin my papers by spraying it with starch though. So I might, I, th I think I'll probably just, um, I'll probably just, just press it really well. And now that I'm thinking, I don't actually need to, um, I don't actually need to use applique pins. All I have to do, I can use my glue. I can, I can glue baste it just like how we did all of these. So I think I might just do that. That'll be easy. I, I remember we did that for the splendid sampler and, and that actually worked super duper well. All right, I'm gonna pop out these, um, this round of papers because every single, uh, it's covered by all the sides and it'll help us to um, fold our little areas without, you know, it'll be easier to fold this without, you know, a piece of paper there. So I'm gonna pop these out. I'm gonna start by just running my needle underneath the seam allowance, because remember we glued these on, but with just, you know, a gentle little glue that will come off. Whoop, geez, I see. That's why I need the one with the lanyard on it, because I just flung my needle. Geez, I almost hit me in the face, actually. All right, let's just hope that doesn't happen again. All right, number two. I don't think I have it all the way off yet. This one, I think I might have sewn through it a little bit. So I'm gonna just lift that up and pop it. Yeah, we're right here. Oh, nope, just some more glue. A little more glued. You love popping the papers. I know, I, this is, I don't know why, but it's really satisfying. I feel like it, you know, I, I think why I like it is because it turns it into fabric again. Like now all this area is just simple one layer of fabric again, as if we, as if these never existed and we did some sort of magic trick to make these shapes, I, I like that. I like the mystery, I like knowing, knowing how the mystery happened. Whoa, geez, flung that one again. This is dangerous tonight. Okay, last one. Uh oh, there we go. I was pulling on my stitches a little bit, but I think we're okay. He can go back into fill. And so I'm not taking any of these out because they're not surrounded all the way. Um, only the center area. So our center area is completely paperless now, which is great. All right, here's my needle. Where did I leave off? Okay, here. So here is my next piece that I need to put together. And I'm gonna just jump right to the other side. I'm not gonna worry about that thread. I don't think I need to. So let's, but see now how, how easily this folds now, it's because I don't have the papers there anymore. So this is gonna make things super duper easy peasy for us now. Get the clip in there just because I probably don't need it anymore. Okay, let's get these, the rest of these phalanges. Oh, you're using denim for your pillow. Oh, that'll be fun. It's a, uh, oh, let me, sorry, I missed yours. For your pillow backing, will you be doing the two-piece folded flat so you can wash the pillow form easily? It's a two-piece backing for the pillowcase. Yep, Patricia, that's, I think that's my plan. I'm gonna do um, that thing where, you know, the front will just be a square 
and the back will be two rectangles that are bigger than, you know, half. So like they're two, two rectangles that are like about two thirds of the size so that they overlap by a little bit on the inside and then you sew all the way around and then you got like that little pocket. That's, I think that just sounds easy. So I'm gonna do that. So I'll hem the one side. I am gonna put a little edging on it and I have a, a fun way of doing that. And I think I might, you know, again, I'm making this a bigger project than it needs to be, but I do have, you know, I have my pile of scraps that I used yet. I thought I would uh, uh, kind of improv piece them together into a long one inch strip and then make what will end up being like a quarter inch little, um, little decorative edging to it. I thought that might, might be fun because it'll be like the same pieces that are in, in this piece. So it's kind of like a final little frame for it. And those will just get cut to the size of each side and then folded and sewn in. They're not gonna be, it's not gonna be like corded or anything like that. It's just gonna be a little, a little flappy trim that's a quarter inch big that kind of gets some um, sewn in at the corners a little bit. It'll make sense when we do it. Uh, but yeah, I thought um, use up some more scraps, get a little improv PC in there and, um, or maybe I have pieces that are long enough that I can just cut to the length of the side. Otherwise we'll patchwork them together to make one inch strips. But I think that's the plan. Oh, the envelope pillow. Yep, Carla, that's exactly, that's that's what I'm gonna be doing. The three pieces, but with a little fun edge with um, the fabrics from the piece. Any way to use up more of those scraps? So I'm just moving, moving my flap out of the way here again. Oops, dropped, dropped my needle. But yeah, that's, that's what I got pictured in my head at least. I think, I think we'll have some measuring involved just to make sure that I should be ending up with an 18 inch square for an 18 inch pillow. Um, but other than that, I think it should be pretty straightforward. Take a, f a few few nights, especially if we do that sewn edge. But we'll get it all appliqued and everything before we tackle tackle that. Ooh, I'm having a hard time getting in the corner. Take out the papers and you use too much glue. Oh no! Oh, it was more work than it should have been. Oh, that's a bummer. I hope it. Hope you get it all out though. Oh yeah, I know. It's it's actually not curving from this project. It's curving, which that was interesting to me. So it actually wasn't curving at all from the needle from the uh, from the English paper piecing where the bending. Oh wait, or was it the other way around? It was the other way around. So yeah, this is where it's bending from. It's it's bending from the English paper piecing, not the needle turn applique. So I, I was I thought that was interesting um yeah it's it's how i'm holding it specifically for this english paper piecing that's bending it it's a pretty thin needle and i have a i have another one in case this one becomes unusable but yeah needle turn applique did not bend it uh english paper piecing totally bent it <laughs> i like how you're saying that though i'm warming up the needle <laughs> I've never heard that before. That's funny. I like it. All right. Lots of sides. Actually, now that I'm stitching these, it's taking a while to stitch all these sides up. We might, uh, we might still be stitching these on, uh, on Monday. Finish stitching the sides and then stitch on the other 
the other hexagons or uh, pentagons, the chrysanthemum ends, the four of those. We'll see. We're cruising now. But it was a good mail week. I, I've been getting in all the things for for um, all of you guys who pre-ordered the embroidery supplies bundle. So fun, random bits that will all end up being the finished bundle. <laughs> it's fun. Oh, your needles turn black from use? Oh, that's interesting. I don't think I've had that happen before, Jenna. Uh, actually, I do have some that I haven't used in a while that are like old and some of those are rusty. They're probably pretty poor quality. So those are kind of black a little bit. Oh, your quilting needle does. Your quilting needle turns black. Oh, interesting. Maybe these will start use turning black now that I'm doing a whole lot more hand work. <laughs> My embroidery, that hasn't happened to my embroidery needles ever. That's good, I suppose. That's what I use the most. Ooh, trying to get through this. And I think I'm grabbing paper. Just gonna get a little knot going. Okay, next up, this little Square. I'm kind of zigzagging back and forth. Eh, let's get a clip in yet, I suppose. Just to get that corner. Get in there. Those wee white candles in church. Oh, you hold it long enough to warm the wax. I usually stretch it. Oh, funny. <laughs> All right. Well, how many more of these do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, wow, we have six to go yet that's well and then seven if you include this one man this is a each step takes its time i suppose the time it takes and with a hand project like this you gotta just kind of let it if i try and rush this and think oh i have to get it done in a certain amount of time then then it won't become fun anymore We'll just keep working on it and see where we get. Might not start applying till Tuesday or Wednesday, or probably Tuesday. Oops. Out of there. You can hear that little click, that's me hitting the paper or like brushing over the paper with my needle. So I'm not going right through it. All right, out here. Oh, my needle fell off. make this a little shorter. This is definitely a whole lot less awkward without those papers in, so that's nice. Yep, exactly. Tomorrow's another day. Jeez, I haven't watched that movie in years and years. Bonnie, I should try and find that somewhere. Maybe it's on Netflix or something. That'd be one to put on for a long day of um, <laughs> tying ties in a jean quilt. <laughs> and 
Another nice thing, if I get farther on that jean quilt, is um, I'll uh, eventually get to get this thing out of my living room. It's been sitting on a on a like a little chair in the living room for ages. It's got to get done. All right, next up. Match that in. Clip. All righty. I think this might be the last one with this thread and I'll switch, I'll get a new piece of thread. Catching stuff. All right, little knot. Yeah, I've not had that happen with the needle getting black from actually using it. You have to get your jean coat done before the snow. I know, Joyce. I've been saying that every year, though, for like four or five years. Uh, it's going on a decade-long project. It really, it really is. It's at least eight years, but I think it was eight years last year. So it might be nine years that I've been putzing around on this jean quilt. I still have to do a binding and everything. I, I didn't, I didn't make a binding, so I have to measure it. And do that, but I don't know. I gotta get these ties done. The trick is, you know, I had a kind of a neat pattern going with the ties, but then you have to have, make sure that you have enough ties in. So that's that's the trick. I think I have a whole border worth of ties to do yet too. So there's a lot of a lot of tying to to go around. Still, we'll see how it goes. But it'd be nice to put a couple more hours in on it. Oh yeah, the next one with Christmas colors. Yeah, I mean, you know, all these big quilts, they, they take their time. Yeah, we'll see how far we get on the I Love Home quilt. Um, I, I do want to start up the projects that we have scheduled already. So if we don't get done with the whole sandwiching and quilting and, and all that and binding and all that with the I Love Home, that's okay. We'll have to just, we'll pick it up in another finish it, uh, finish it spring. But in a way that rhymes <laughs> or there's alliteration. <laughs> Sew it up spring, how about that? Okay, now I'm definitely warming up the needle. I feel like I'm bending it a little bit more. Oh, you finished your English paper piecing snowflake watching Lemony Stick It, oh fun. Oh fun, I didn't know Neil Patrick Harris was in that. That's awesome, congrats on finishing though. We're getting there here. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna weave in that end a little bit. I think we're done with this thread. We'll get another one going. Actually, I'm gonna just, eh, I'll leave it. I was gonna snip this little jump that I made, but why bother? Okay. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five now. Uh, let's get this. Wow, geez, I totally uncoordinated grabbing that thread tonight. Okay. Getting her done. If 
Finish that thing spring. Okay, I like that, Julie. Finish that thing spring. <laughs> That's what we'll have to call it. You'll have to remind me when spring comes along. Oh yeah, that's true, Bonnie. Have, just have people come over and do all the tying for me. If only. I think we'll start this way. All right, get my click in there again so that doesn't slide around my little point. Finish that thing spring. I like it. Although maybe it'll be summer before we have a... Oops, gotta do the corner. Um, before we have a free moment again. Because early spring, or spring-ish, is when we'll start the crochet, not crocheted, but the um, granny square quilt. I'm excited about that. Yeah, so I, I still haven't written the update on the next projects coming up. Um, I know I did I did a little calendar, but that was all the way back in August. So I want to send you guys another email with that and um, just for the update on what's coming up with links and stuff for that. So um, hopefully I'll do that on Sunday as well so you can get it next week. Will you tie your jean quilt with yarn or floss and in one color or many? I am tying it with wool yarn, 100% wool yarn, because I want that that effect of where it gets felted and then it just all jumbles together in a ball. So it's like that tight wool ball that's that's holding the quilt together. I thought that would be pretty strong compared to floss, um, which can untie a little bit because it doesn't it doesn't felt up against each other like like wool does. So I'm doing wool ties and they're all black. I'm doing every single one is black. So it's black against the um, blue blue quilt. I think red would have been kind of fun, but I didn't want it to be about all the red dots. So I, I did the black, so it's kind of understated. Is the granny square quilt the one made with charm squares and then crocheted around? Oh no, but I have seen that, Peggy. I, that's cute. I forgot about that that one. I, I saw that online a while back, but no, that's that's not what it is. It's um it's a quilt. It was in a magazine. I'll I'll um I'll I'll send some info about it. I'll send a, a picture for it too. I shared a, a photo of it on my Facebook page a while back and um, a bunch of you seemed interested in it and I contacted the designer and the magazine and and they were up for it. Um yeah, it does look old-fashioned looking a little bit. I mean, it it wouldn't have to. But it, it's not, it doesn't, it's not crocheted, you know, like the granny square would imply, but, you know, in a granny square quilt or um, afghan, how each granny square is like a color and then a color surrounding and then a color surrounding. Um, it's kind of like that, but it's, um, I don't know, it mimics, it mimics a uh, granny square crocheted quilt. So it mimics that look, but it's actually a quilt. It's just a piece quilt. It's just a cute name and, and it it references those granny square quilts. I just think it'll be a fun, it looks like a fun block and a fun thing to do. And I like granny square uh, blankets and this might be my fix for, for granny square instead of um, crocheting one. I've kind of wanted to crochet one for a while but I have so many other projects that I'm like, eh, do I want to do it that bad? And then uh, this this quilting version of it came up and I thought it was pretty cute. Maybe it'll inspire me to do the real one. I don't know. We'll see. All right, I might just do one more of these tonight and uh, then finish up the rest on on Monday, we'll see. It's getting to be that time again. Oh, you removed all your papers, some didn't survive. Well, that's fine. Uh, the neat thing is you actually don't need all these papers because, you know, like one that I pulled here, I could use 
up here later, you know? So you don't need all of them. Uh, your grandma always made granny squares, aww! And your auntie always made ripple stitches, oh cute! So I love the idea of making two styles in the quilt. So there is, there, um, this is all quilted, so this is all, all piece, but there is that cute thing that I saw going around. I don't know who was making it, but it was just like little piece squares and then they were crocheted together. So it's kind of a weird combo actually the, to have the sewn squares with the their crocheted borders, but it was kind of neat. But that's not what we're doing. Ours is a design that just kind of mimics the granny squares. Your twin sister is a granny square queen. Oh, nice. All sorts of colors. Aw, oh, see, that's, I, I think that, you know, maybe once I get done with some of my yarn projects that I have sitting around, maybe that would be a good, just when you have a few minutes, well, probably more than a few minutes, but just when you're sitting around, you, you stitch up a granny square. That'd be a good travel project. I never thought about granny square blankets that way where, like, oh, I could just stitch up a square in this little amount of time and stitch up another one later. It's not till the end where you really are laying them out and putting putting them together. So that it'd be kind of like English paper piecing where you just you just make you sew one to the other and then you you make one and you make another one and all of a sudden you got a whole pile of them to put together. Oh, you saw that too, the cloth squares um, crocheted together. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Maybe that's a project we can do sometime. Throw it on the docket here. But yeah, I want to do some, we'll do that crayon embroidery and stuff. So yeah, so on Sunday I gotta, I've gotta think of the plan, like the, um, the schedule a little bit more and then I'll get that email out and we'll just commit to that schedule at that point. Oh, you made everyone Granny Square Afghans for, for Christmas one year. Oh, that's awesome, Tara. That's a pretty sweet gift. They're fun to make too. I'm not sure I've ever made one. I made seat cushions that were a rounded version. It was kind of a neat pattern. It was a round version of a Granny, granny Squares, but I've never made like this straight up granny squares, which seems odd. That seems like something I should have done. So I don't know. That might be fun to do. That might be like a fun little beginning crochet project that we could do here. That might be neat. All right, guys, I think we're going to end it there. I'm going to put the needle in my piece. So if I'm looking for it on Monday, I put it in, in the deal here. So, all right, we got, we got a few things sewn up. I think, um, Oh, we're going in a weird order. Oh, I started over here. So we sewed, we're, we did pretty well. We did all of these. All we have left is, we just have three more guys left. So we should be able to finish those pretty quick on Monday, which is great because then we can prep these on Monday. Oh, I lost one somewhere. Here we go. And maybe even stitch them on because joop, 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 joop. Yeah. Maybe we'll even be able to stitch them on on Monday as well. That'd be pretty rad. Get it all the way done. So let's hope that that's the plan. Let's hope on Monday that we finish this whole thing. And then on Tuesday, Tuesday we can start um, the applique process. We can cut our fabric and then, then applique it to the front. Or at least get started with the applique. Dang, I hope we get that far. That'd be awesome! All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we will call it an evening. Oh, you always had granny squares around. That's neat. All right, here we go. So we still need these little nubbin guys down here like we have at the top just to finish it, just to make it, I mean, I think that helps make it square. So there we are. It is coming together. We got the little flanges squares over there yet, but... We're getting there, get it done. I'm excited. So uh, like I said, Monday, we will hopefully finish up the actual sewing of this. And then on Tuesday, we can start the applique. Oh, that means by Wednesday, we might be really sewing. Uh, we'll probably still be doing applique, but that is the plan. All right, guys, I am going to call it a night. I hope you guys have a fabulous uh, Saturday and Sunday. 
and if I get if I do any craftiness, I'll try and take photos and maybe I'll, I'll throw them up to Instagram and stuff. So, uh, or do like some Instagram stories. So you can check out the, uh, check out Penguin and Fish on Instagram to see some of that uh, tomorrow. So that is the plan. Uh, thanks again, guys. I will check out Facebook too, so I can see all your photos of your new little fish museum and circus guys and, and everything you're working on. And I've been out of the group for, for the week. So I'm, I'm missing you guys and want to pop back in there. So I will do that as well. Have a great evening. I will catch you on Monday. Good night.